The vibration of change, that magical place where life shifts from struggle to ease, from stagnation to forward movement, from old ways of being to new ways of becoming. Yes, it can seem rather elusive to get there, but when you are in it, you feel it down to your very core, and it can positively affect everything in your life, from your relationships to your health and well-being, from your career path to your abundance, from the quality of your inner connection to the fullness of your self-expression. Here on the Christine Upchurch Show, we explore ways to get into that vibration of change with experts in the fields of consciousness, psychology, spirituality, health, healing, and science. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So grateful you're joining us here today. You might be listening live on 1150 AM KKNW here in the Seattle area. And at the moment, it's sunny Seattle area, at least in my neck of the woods. Um, or you might be listening live anywhere around the world on TransformationTalkRadio.com or perhaps live on Facebook Live um, on my professional page um, or after the fact on my YouTube channel, which I encourage you to sign up to um, or one of the dozens of podcasts it sends up. But wherever and whenever, we're so grateful you're here because you know, we do this show for you. And I'm really excited about our guest today, but I want to say hello to the people behind the technology first. Uh, good morning, Mr. Benny Mathers at KKNW. Hi, Christine. Big hug to you. Here we go. Uh, ah, big yes. hug back. Big yes, hug back. Um, and uh, yeah, how are your boys doing? They're awesome. Uh, they're in school. Can't check in with them now. Maybe I should <laughs> <laughs> just surprise them one day. That'd be great, right? <laughs> if they're yeah, doing our, awesome. Our, how old are the twins now? Uh, they turned 11 uh, at the beginning of the month. Yeah, I figured it was around their birthday yeah. time. So 11, I cannot believe it. I remember, I when know. They were, you know, I right. don't know. Four. It's amazing. They're still chatter, little, little chatter bugs. They must take out for their dad or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go with that. Uh, and <laughs> Good morning to Jacob at Transformation Talk Radio. How are you doing? Doing well. Good morning, Christine. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm just so excited about the sunshine, and I'm so excited about our guest today. Um, it's somebody who's been a guest on our show before, and the other day, she and I were um, having a conscious conversation, and I really wish that we had been recording it on Zoom or something because it was so insightful, um, but I know that our listeners will benefit if they get to be the proverbial fly on the wall and listen to what she has to say and what we have to say to each other, because really there's, there's something magical about the process of conversation. It's, it's the sort of thing where you can read books and you can go to presentations and you can watch some, some things online. But when there's this conversation, there's this back and forth that allows the the thought process the 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 energetics to flow in a way that may be unexpected and it can be more expansive than just the simple you know one person uh one idea coming across um our guest today is kate montana she is a best-selling author um she is a journalist she's got this amazing background and she balances the psychology and the science and the spirituality in a way that is, is fairly unique. I truly appreciate her. And also, by the way, folks, if any of you happen to be writing a book or working on an article for publication, she's a fabulous editor. Uh, so I would like to welcome our guest today, Kate Montana. Hey, Kate. Good morning. Good morning. It's still it's still morning in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you for the thank you for the promotion. <laughs> Work is good. Oh, Feeds yeah. the cat. <laughs> and you know, I think that there are plenty of people who want to make their mark in the world via a book. Uh, more and more people are writing books, and you don't even have to find your way to a publisher. And when you when you don't go through a publisher, you don't automatically get the, the types of editors that you need to get to have a decent book. I mean, That's true. you know, having a show and having had a show for, gosh, it's pushing nine and a half years I've been yeah. doing radio. It's, it's the sort of thing where you can tell when somebody has jumped through the right editorial hoops and when they haven't there, you know, once upon a time, if it was a self-published book, it's like, Oh, I don't know. You know, and you, <laughs> you open the first page and there would be grammatical errors or, you know, typos or whatever. Yeah. Um, and some of the self-published books now are amazing. And it's clear 
when somebody has used an editor. So I did want to I did want to mention that as well because I know you've edited my work before too. And one of the things it's like you know okay so I've done some editing too not you know not the way you have but it's I can be really good at the grammar and I can be really good at um, you know the the punctuation and 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 all that stuff, but sometimes I don't go deep enough. Sometimes I don't get vulnerable enough. You also called me on, on that. And yeah. so I think it's great to have somebody who's aware of the, the, you know, the consciousness literature that's out there as well as some of the scientific literature. Because I know that you're a journalist in the scientific realm as well. Yeah. And to have somebody who, who's not only got an editorial eye, but also um, understands how somebody can make their mark within the, the field. Yeah, and we all have our beautiful perspective, which you know everybody has a voice and everybody has a story, and and it's just remarkable and to be able to to be a do what do they call a doula? <laughs> to, yes, you know, yes. To, to help be a birth mom, um, you know, to help it, it's really cool. It's really cool. I used to. It's so interesting. My my ego always used to want to be. I'm the star. I'm the author. I'm the person on the stage. Let me uh -huh. tell you what I know. And it's really right. cool. I've, I, maybe it's just a sign of getting older. But now I just don't give a hoot about, so much about right. that. Actually, I don't give a hoot at all. I could use a different word, but we'll use hoot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, Ben. Benny says thank you, Kate. <laughs> yeah, I like hoot. I like it <laughs> in my wheelhouse. <laughs> Um, yeah, so now it's it's more about helping people get their own uh, their own message out, and it's really cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm and so excited to be back on the show because it's been it's been a couple of years, and I was just uh -huh. you know you'd been on my mind, and so I was so glad when we connected a few days ago. It was just mm -hmm. pretty amazing, yeah. especially <laughs> the waters we got into. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and you know, as you can probably guess, being on YouTube, being streaming on radio, besides some of the swear words. There's certain words that we have to stay away from because it sort of triggers the censorship. But um, oh, like CV? What's your curriculum vitae? <laughs> 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 That's the new synonym. It's the new. <laughs> yes, yes, code yes. And, and, uh, yeah, there there are some great code words, um, and I've seen some some amusing ways that people type this stuff to to yep. kind of avoid censorship. But it's um, really, you know. <sighs> we're not here to talk about the nitty gritty of the science, the nitty gritty of like the, and of the de debate. Really, you and I have both been on our journeys. And I know that, oh gosh, way back when, I don't know, it was probably 2014, 2015. I don't know, when you were still here, uh, you know, not on the mainland as opposed to yeah. Hawaii, and you'd come out and visited out on Orcas. Yeah. And you and I were talking about bucking against some of the spiritual tenets of the new age movement and we were sort of doing our own processing of wait a minute you know this is this is what i'm supposed to believe in and i'm not sure that that makes sense and and so um you know we've we've been on a similar journey and over the last couple of years i know that you as a scientific journalist a <clears throat> medical journalist um you've been sort of assessing what's been going on and so you and I have been on a similar path that way because, yeah. you know, research statistician, you know, has to dive deep into this stuff, which has led to a kind of deep dive within to belief systems, to ego. Uh, can you just share with our listeners and viewers a little bit about your journey, your, your inner journey over the last couple of years? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, when COVID hit in 2020, it was, it was like hitting, a, it was hitting a wall. It was like all my life I'd been, you know, we're so doing oriented. We're so wired to, you know, we're professional. We, we're doing oriented. And when that happened, I just, all of a sudden it was like a curtain came down and went, oh my God, the spiritual truth that there's nothing external that can satisfy me just became so obvious. And it was like, Oh my God, it's really true. There's nothing out there in the world that can satisfy me, make me happy, fulfill me. There's nothing I could. And it was, and it was, it was just like immediately just back down within. And I ended, 
<laughs> I ended up dropping pretty much, I was starting to promote another book and do another book and I was writing a stage play and I dropped all of that and I ended up starting to teach A Course in Miracles because it was like, the only thing that matters is that we get our <clears throat> act together <laughs> and that we, that we figure out really who we are and who we really, really are. And, and, and it's not the persona that precipitated all this mess that we've been dealing with with the last two years. It's not the ego, it's not the, it's, and it's like, so I started teaching A Course in Miracles and then that led to a real shocker. Somebody introduced me to a book called A Course of Love and which was, I don't know if you know about this, it's, it's another mm -hmm. channeled teaching of Jesus that it blew me out of the water. Um, I, here I am, I've got a huge class doing A Course in Miracles and six months into the class, somebody introduces me to A Course of Love and I'm like, there's no way that there's another channel teaching of Jesus. And so I'm in the midst of this conversation with this woman who is a divine, beautiful, heart-based being that I adore and trust. And she's talking about this. Yes, it was channeled 30 years later by this woman named Pamari Perone. And, and, and in my mind, Christine was just going berserk, going, no, no, it took me long enough to figure that, you know, to accept A Course in Miracles and that there really was a channeling by Jesus and there can't be another one and there's nothing better. And all the while my mind is frothing, my heart is just exploding going, yes, oh, yes, yes. So, so as soon as I hung up the phone, I ordered it on Amazon and it consumed me. It just took me over. And I realized that it was, this is like, this is the next step for me from A Course in Miracles. And it's about, you know, The Course in Miracles is about reframing our mind and waking up to that I'm not this persona, Kate Montana, who stands on a stage or who writes books or who has all these dreams and aspirations. No, 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 who this deeper being is and re reworking the mind, but then the next step is to open the heart so the heart and the mind can link up and the heart can lead. Yeah. And so anyway, so I had to um, actually <clears throat> tell my whole class of A Course in Miracles students that I was not gonna teach A Course in Miracles anymore that I was switching to a course of love. So that was interesting. And, but it's been, to get to your original question, it's been two years of just letting go all these last mm. shreds of, you know, people might say the last shreds of hope that I'm going to do something, accomplish something, be somebody, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But it's been this rich dive into my heart and just following where that goes. So yeah, so I, I lose half my class of A Course in Miracles. And, you know, and then, you know, and then everybody shift, the rest shifts over to A Course of Love. And it's, and I've just watched miracles happen in people's lives. I've just watched mm -hmm. people, you know, just let go of issues that have driven them for decades. And, and I've realized that it's, it's this energetic portal. What's so cool about it is that I don't even have to understand what I'm reading anymore because that's not mm -hmm. the point. Is the intellectual mind can never wrap it around, wrap itself around that who we really are place. And yeah. um, so, and I've just accepted that energetic portals exist like, mm -hmm. like a course of love, et cetera, et cetera. And then just, if you're pulled, explore, walk through and, and that it's easy. That's yeah. one of the real revelations I've had in the past couple of years, Christine, because we're in the midst of this horrific social breakdown where nothing is easy and everything is torturous and tortured and blah 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 and it's just like all of a sudden life has just gotten so easy because mm -hmm. i've i've dropped the a lot of the mental conversation and 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 an argument within myself and just eased into the simplicity of my heart and then i just follow it whatever shows up next is the right thing and, to do and i i find it fascinating that um you got to a place that when with where some people would say you just don't care anymore right yeah. and i have gotten to the same place and i'm not always there mind you but it's it's been a significant part of my transformation over the over the last couple of years and it's the kind of thing where it letting go of the shoulds letting go of the want tos letting go of the the mission desire which you know, I was always so mission based before. <laughs> has has led me to this. I don't care, and this is expansive mm -hmm. place. Yes, uh, and and it's been so surprising. Like, okay, well, you know, is it just the stage of life I'm at? Have I just been, you know, run ragged with my belief systems about 
certain things in our world kind of being, you know, beaten up and transformed to like disbelieve a whole lot of things. You know, is it, it, am I weary? It's like, no, I just don't care about the same things anymore. And in that creates a sort of beingness and this sense of a, allowing that is incredibly expansive. Yeah. Nothing looks the same and everything looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it's weird. It's funny because I had, um, oh gosh, about a year ago, I had this interesting experience. I was busy cutting up some vegetables in the kitchen and there I am working with a sharp knife and, you know, I think carrot or something like that. And I'm looking through my eyes and I'm looking at my hands. I no longer feel my body. Um, and I'm looking at my hands and I'm like, my hands? Are those my hands? No, not my hands. Are those my hands? And it was like, I was observing from this other place through my body, but not so... It wasn't like I was transcending the body completely and um, and sort of like looking down at myself like astral projection or something like that. It was like there I was in my body functioning as a human being going about a daily task, cooking dinner, and yet I was disconnected from my body and yet still seeing through my eyes. And it was the weirdest thing. I'm, you know, I'm sure that, you know, in some cases, psychologists would say, oh, she needs to be locked up for that, right? But it, it felt like this incredibly significant few moments where I recognized this duality that we're living in and not the, the good, bad duality, because that's a whole other thing, but this duality of being spirit, witnessing the life within the human form, but also being the human going about life. You know, that's, that's so interesting because one of the things that um, Jesus talks about in A Course of Love is that we have come to a place in evolution of creation where, the, so the original urge was to express through physical form. And we, and we, then we got locked into physical form and identified with physical form. So then the struggle in physical form was to get out of physical form and get back to our original uh, light and and to so it was always about getting out to God, getting right. back to God, um, the higher self. Like, oh, please, please, higher self, save me. Um, uh -huh. And so, and, and and this has rocked my world in the last couple of years, Christine, is because now it's about actually really being God in form and creating and um, Jesus calls that we are now at the time of the elevated self of form. We've been God, which, and we're still God. We've been locked in form, identified with form. We've struggled to get back to God, but we've never experienced God as the original point of creation was to walk and talk and chew gum as the divine beings that we are. Mm. And so then the locus of perception, how you identify, it's, you know, I've been like everybody else locked into this body thinking that and identifying with this, with form, then trying to get out of form. But then there's this place when we, that's who we really are, that perspective just gradually starts taking us over until the low, the center of perception isn't, I'm the body trying to be spiritual is all of a sudden the spiritual aspect of ourselves that encapsulates the body. Mm -hmm. It right. surrounds the body. It permeates the body. It animates the body. It is the body, mm -hmm. but it's more than the body. So it's like the surrounding <gasps> perception. And that's what you experienced in that moment in the kitchen. You were your body. You were aware of your body. You were acting through your body, but you weren't your body. You were larger than your body, but you weren't out of your body. Exactly. That's exactly. the that's the bingo. That's what we're yeah. looking oh, yeah. for. And and what I've been saying for years now is that we, you know, the, so many of the spiritual teachings have been about, you know, transcending the body, as you talked about, you know, and reaching up and connecting in that, in that higher frequency vibration. But really, it's a matter of coming into a fuller vibration that includes the high frequency vibration, as well as the, the lower frequency, denser vibration of the body. 
And, and that's so important because that, what that does is it's essentially grounding the light within the body, grounding the light, more light onto the planet, which I believe will ultimately shift the planet. Oh, it's that, you know, there's no more ultimately about it, Christine. It's shifted the planet. And that's why we're seeing the, uh, uh, what did I say, hoot? The hoot storm. <laughs> <laughs> the hoot storm that's going on, that's been going on yeah. for the last two years. Because we have been dreaming of this new place, this new expression, this expression of the elevated self in form. And for eons, it was the original point of creation to begin with. And now we're stepping into those big shoes that have always been waiting for us. And when we do that, then all of the crapola that has been the creation of the ego, of the fear-based separated self, of uh, that it that thrives and desperately needs control and power over, and you know, and it is consume consumption based. It's got to have more, more, more to feed its emptiness. That's the the spotlight's on it, baby. So that's what we're seeing, and and it's it's taken me a, a while to kind of like, wow, have we really already moved into this amazing space? Yes, we have. I've gone from at the beginning of the whole COVID show, you know, going, oh my God, it's all falling apart and, and it's terrible to, oh my God, it's all falling apart and it's supposed to, it uh -huh. has to, and we have created this. Yes. And this and, is just the gateway. And it's, you know, some people call it devolution. That's an important part of, <laughs> De you know, devolving in a way oh, to get devolution. Us, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get us to this place of, breaking apart, like, first of all, illuminating the dysfunction and the, the evil, you know, and the control, and then breaking the systems that are basically con continuing that, you know, that control, um, that ego-based um, creation and breaking those systems down so that we can evolve because we really cannot evolve within the context of the structures as they are and it's you know it's 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 kind of crazy to try to think about how that might unfold but mm -hmm. um and it you know it can it can invoke fear in us too because we're so used to life looking a certain way and it's not just a matter of whether we go to the store with or without this thing over our face or not it's it has to do with the way we interact with our neighbors, the way we connect with, with humans, the way we um, make money. The, you know, it's like, it, it, it's, it's going to affect us on, in so many ways, including how we interact with our planet. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's like, you know, of course, mainstream media is completely censored and shut down, but mm -hmm. there's, I think the figure is something like 70, it's a 70 mile long truck caravan now in Canada. Yes. Thousands oh. and thousands and thousands and thousands of truckers. And mm. Mm, probably a million people along the highway waving flags, supplying food, supplying mm -hmm. beverages, supplying places. To, just it, it, It's just this huge output, vaccinated, unvaccinated. It doesn't uh -huh. matter. We mm. are human beings come together to support ourselves outside of this restrictive fear-based existence that's crippling us this always crippled us now we see the larger picture where whole, all of the global crippling mm -hmm. and it's just like we're not you know the whole the whole joke about the journey spiritual spiritual journey is that you know to finally see what you're not ah uh, yes and we're finally on a global level whether you're hindu muslim arabic agnostic atheistic whatever you are is to see, oh my God, I, I can't identify with this crap anymore. Mm -hmm. And go, whoa, well, if I'm not that, and I don't feel, you know, and it's not about the issues where we can go to go to war with one another. Right. We're so sick of the war. We are. And this is such a beautiful place to finally come to. Oh my God, I, I mean, I, I, 
I, I hit a wall with a, with a very close friend and, and business associate of 17 years over the C word. And, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and it was such an opportunity because I dropped it. You know, I, I so wanted to get my point across. I so wanted to be, I didn't even want to be right. I just wanted to be heard and understood and accepted. And, right. it, and it wasn't happening. And I had to let that go. I remember waking up at three o'clock in the morning and I'm all, you know, that, you know, the, re, I'm going to respond to that email and you're lying there at 3 a.m. going, well, I could say this and I could say that. And, you know, you're all knotted up. And it's like, and I, I lay there and I went, this sucks. This is stupid. I, I don't want to do this anymore. And I got off it like that. I dropped it. And it ended up ending the relationship, but it was an imbalanced relationship anyway that actually needed to go. Mm-hmm. So that it could have yeah. so that the other person could evolve, I could evolve and and move on. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, oh. it's, it's so interesting but, because um I think that for those of us who have who believe that we are seeing many aspects of truth that the masses in general are not, you know, willing to look at or aren't able to see, or, you know, they, their version of reality is different, however you want to term it. Um, I think that many of us have had to let go of relationships of all sorts. Mm-hmm. I know that there are huge rifts in people's families and, um, you know, people who've been uninvited to weddings and uninvited to holiday gatherings and these sorts of things. Um, and then there are friendships that end and, and people are exiting businesses or jobs because, you know, they, they're they told they have to do one thing and it's not in alignment with who they are. And so, although these aren't necessarily easy decisions on, on one level, another level, it, it is easy. It's just navigating who we are and how we move about in life and, and the choices we make. You know that, and I, I've seen so many friends and and counseled numerous people through this really painful passage, where you are disinvited to your your sister's wedding, and it's like and and to stand firm in who you are, but to love who you are and to acknowledge who you are is so incredibly powerful. Not and then not make the other person wrong, but to, you know here we come back to the whole sticky issue of is love enough. Is it enough that I simply hold love for myself, for my sister, for my family? It, it doesn't mean I'm going to get railroaded into doing something I don't want to do. It doesn't mean I'm heard and understood, but I sit in love and maybe my sister will come back into my life at another time. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. Is love enough? Do I trust that, you know, the, across space and time, will that be enough that I'm still connected to her? Yeah. And that I can still embrace her and be whole and be still with my family in spirit. Is that enough? Because mm-hmm. we're being called on our BS about, you know, well, I'm a spiritual person and it's all about love. And then we hit these places yeah. and, and it is, it, it's a Fisher cut bait time. And it's, it's interesting to see some of the, the divisiveness and some of the, the hate speech against those who chose not to get the you know what in the arm Mm -hmm. um and then to to see some of these people who've said horrific things about you know they should have their kids taken away or i mean they're horrible horrible things hope they die you know seeing that they get their next one and 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 then you know within 48 hours within 24 hours they're dead of a blood clot or whatever and it's it's like to be able to, to see that it's not like, oh, well, they got their, their, you know, their justice. They got theirs. It's, it's, yeah. it's more like, oh, how sad it, you know, it, it feels like, first of all, it, on a human level, it feels very frustrating to not, not be able to sway people based on information, right? Mm-hmm. And the information's out there. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's just, it's the sort of thing where, we have to continue to have compassion for those who have hated us, for those who have, you know, um, sort of fed the divisiveness that is so toxic to our planet right now. And to trust that they had their soul's journey, they played their role within the context of this collective, um, but to not 
feel a sense of, you know, vengeful um, enjoyment. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, who is it? I mean, for God's sakes, Jesus, you know, would, would look people in the eye and say, you know, you're not my mother. You're not my father. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk away from your family. And because that's not our real, fa it is our real family, but it's not our real family. Our real family is of the heart and of the soul. Mm. And, and we have got to be able to learn to let go. <laughs> mm. it, it, so, you know, and, and at a certain point, it's not e even easier than said than done. It's just like, we've got to let go. And I, I've got a dear friend who, who's, you know, she couldn't wait for the vaccine for her little 11 year old boy who just is just this precious being and and i just had to let go she didn't mm -hmm. want to hear a word about anything and i'm just and so and you know and here's the human here's the here's the horrible human side horrible human here's just the human side and the, have i had a thought like well if he gets sick and dies that'll show you that i was right that voice is there Mm -hmm. it's in all of us well it's in me I'll just I'll just raise my hand and say it's in me and I've stopped judging it it's just that perspective it's just that stupid little human blah blah and that's mm -hmm. not who I am yeah. and so it doesn't it doesn't twist me up anymore that that comes up I just go yeah which reminds me of that other part of the conversation that we had the other day talking about with Tico the the mind parasite yeah, the, tell us a little bit about that. It's oh fascinating. Boy. It is fascinating. I'll even hold up a book. I don't know. Is it reversed? Can no, you see it's it? correct. It's correct. Yeah. So with Tico, healing the mind virus that plagues our world. There's this, you know, who hasn't seen the image of the, the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, we've been torn so long and so uh, yeah, with these two voices in our heads and we've, and it's all part of the separation game of identifying with the physical body and then mm -hmm. thus feeling isolated and alone and thus afraid and then afraid of the other. Mm -hmm. And then there's conflict and war and divisiveness and judgment and then everything that's been playing out for eons. Uh, um, <clears throat> so there's there's this growing understanding that that this voice of separation is aligned with another a, a force, if you will, of I'll use the word evil, um, mm -hmm. it, which is something that. I dodged the whole evil darkness conversation. Being a spiritual person, mm -hmm. I was all about the light. And, yes. um, and okay, so I had to do some shadow work because that's, you know, that's part of the spiritual journey process. You got to look at your shadow, but I'm not really my shadow and it really doesn't matter. And I've left it behind long ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm safely beyond that. Um, but, you know, and that thought about my friend's son obviously is the lie to that. I've not mm -hmm. left that behind. It's just part sure. of us. And, um, and it's a story that, that has plagued humanity forever. And, and it is based in this fear, in this fear, in this sense of separate self. But what I, and this is just so, this is so bizarre and out of my wheelhouse, Christine, that I, that I came across this whole conversation. So I've, I've been um, listening to a woman by the name of Jacqueline Hobbs, and she's also known as Oracle Girl, uh -huh. oraclegirl.org. I highly recommend anybody check her out. She's really, I can't even describe this woman, but she's, she's basically says, look, I'm here. I'm from the future. This is what I do. I've been drawn here because this is a situation where humanity is equal to this new life that we've been setting forward and dreaming together across time and space and dimensions and mm -hmm. so she just holds something called a purification space that helps us align our own energies with who we really are so that's that's her but she also talks about this other presence that has been influencing humanity in the dark for millions of years mm -hmm. and then so i'm like uh-huh uh-huh right right and then i run across this watiko book by paul levy and he's talking about, I mean, and there's a word for this 
presence, this dark, it's inter, interdimensional, it's non-physical, and yet it works into the physical through us. It's mm -hmm. called a mind parasite. It's called Wetiko in the Native American, I think Ojibwe. Um, is called in the Sioux Nation, I think they call it Windingo. Uh, in Arabic, it's referred to as Iblis. Um, Shaitan, biblical Abrahamic religions. Mm -hmm. The Kabbalah calls it Kelipat. Sri Aurobindo calls it the hostile force. Other people call it mind parasites. Mm. And 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 I and I and then and then I haven't listened to David Icke, the the gentleman from you know everybody labels him a conspiracy theorist, par who's been Icke, right about a whole lot of things so who's far. Who's been right about a whole lot of things. I st I haven't listened to David Icke in fifteen years, and I stumble I accidentally stumble across mm. this. <laughs> And I sent you the link. I don't know. Did you watch that? Have you? Oh, I haven't watched it yet, but I have watched some of his things over the last year. And it just nails it in a nutshell. He just goes, look, X, Y, Z, millions of years ago, he, us beautiful spirit, light body entities, interdimensional beings of love wanted the human, wanted the physical experience. And there was a force that created the image of the body that actually entrapped us. Ah. And we got locked into an image and it was actually a, it was a scientific projection of a hologram. <laughs> Interesting. And Interesting. we, and we beautiful non-corporeal blah, blah, blah entities got enmeshed in this holographic projection. And we've been trapped ever since identifying with the body, identifying with the body, all the fear, mm -hmm. separation, blah, blah, that comes from that. And so, and, and what's fascinating is, is there's all these scientists now, I can't remember the guy's name, Dr. James, uh, anyway, they are now, a lot of quantum physicists are now pretty sure that we are about 80% probability that we're living in a simulation. Yeah. Yeah. And there's even one scientist who's discovered binary computer code buried at the superstring level interesting interesting well yeah okay so i just want to back up here for a minute because um you're, you're talking about something that i would call evil and it sounds like there are a lot of different names for it and it's not just like oh the darkness of our shadow um but rather some entities or mm -hmm. some energy that it has been affecting humanity and it brings me back to this concept of bucking the new age system, because one of the, the tenets of the new age system is that there's only love and fear. Um, and one of the corollaries to that is that evil doesn't exist. It's really, it's really fear. And I think that for most humans, you know, who are whole and in a variety of ways, that's absolutely true. But I also believe that there is this evil energy that has infected plenty of people and that they use that evil to create the fear in people that creates the bigger shadows and so forth. So what's your perspective on evil then? This is so nascent in me. This is also recent. This is, this, all right, I've been on the spiritual path for 40 years and this is the last three months that I've been looking at this. Mm -hmm. So this is so raw and new for me, Christine. Mm -hmm. um, my, my take on it is that this force exists, that it is a, it, it comes from a different source. And, and, and this so broadens, I, I have to you know, credit Jacqueline Hobbs with this concept, is that she said, in the spiritual community I was raised in, there's only one source. It's God, it's the light, and everything mm -hmm. is of the light. Even fear is of the light. And so everything is of the light, and there's only one source. So Jacqueline is, has introduced this, that there's more than one source, mm -hmm. and it is, which just explodes my head. Oh, it's making my crown chakra go nuts, and that's my tell that something is true. Oh my God. And I'm going, okay, what, what could possibly, be? I can't fathom that other source. And she said, and that's the whole point. The other source can't fathom us either, mm, but it is, but the other force is into control and consumption. It's driven by its emptiness. It's very fabric is emptiness versus the fulsomeness of the light. 
Mm, so yeah so it's driven by a completely different agenda and and it thrives in the dark it remains this hidden force and mm -hmm. it takes embodiment through us there we go into possession that we go through mm -hmm. all of these different things and also that apparently if you listen to David Icke the, the, this other force has been trying to genetically manipulate the human race for eons enabled mm -hmm. to be able to utilize these bodies for themselves for itself whatever this right. force that these entities are yeah um so I, I'm be, so I'm kind of taking a I have to calm down <laughs> so, <laughs> so no you don't no you don't no no shoulds no shoulds <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've kind of got this dual look at evil now is that, you know, my whole premise with the, my, one of my last books, the E word about the ego is that the ego, the sense of separation is a natural result of being birthed into a body. You know, the little baby learns that the breast and, you know, the bottle is out there. It's totally, uh -huh. there's no words, there's, it's unconscious, but the sense of other and out there is ingrained in us from our moment of our birth so we automatically are birthed into this oh, separation reality that isn't really reality apparently so the fear that is engendered with that and the need to compete the need to own the need to control is mm -hmm. a natural offshoot of that experience and mm -hmm. then there's this other force that also exists that amplifies that mm, yeah. and then manipulates us through that right so it's kind of like a double donger <laughs> yeah and you know i've i've um i've heard various people you know channelers and and others who talk about how um the evil force you know if it exists it's like i'm i'm still processing this myself because i i do believe that evil exists but is there that separate force that's evil mm -hmm. um, that it um, that it actually is controlling the reincarnation process? Absolutely. And it's um, like, you know, getting thrown back into a body is um, very much about uh, serving that force instead of the light. Oh, honey. I remember, remember a million years ago in my life, I, I went to the Ramtha School of Enlightenment sure. in Washington State. One of the very first things that Ramtha taught, like back in 1992, was that do not go to the light when you die. Ah, uh -huh, interesting. Which just, you know, blew my little mind 30 years ago. And it's been that that teaching has been in the back of my mind for 30 years. So now I'm listening to this source talk about holographic projection our our spiritual interdimensional being love beings that we are enmeshed entrapped in a projection a light projection a holographic projection mm. okay and then with tico and all this other stuff and i'm like oh holy god i can see now 35 years later what ram what the Ram what ramtha said you know don't go to the light that's just cycling into the projection getting stripped and shoved right back into the into the into the hologram mm. so he always yeah. advised he said hang a left go to the void and uh -huh. just hang out and then you're let your own being settle your own inner light create your next step for you rather than being caught in an external projection it's interesting because i've heard tom kenyon who who channels the hathors mm -hmm. um the hathors saying the exact same thing don't go to the light after you pass stay in that void because that is that is that powerful place of creation or something along those lines but you know basically saying the same thing and so when we think about um people's near-death experiences when they come back they talk about this incredible feeling they have when they go to the light when they merge with the light um and it makes me wonder like, okay, well, there's, there's, there's gotta be good to this because they come back and they feel incredibly mm -hmm. loved and all this, but is it a matter of just keeping us in this matrix? And is there any problem with us staying in the matrix? You know, maybe, maybe there's soul growth um, or really should we be getting out of the matrix? I don't know. 
Well, here we come back right back to where we almost started with what Jesus talks about is time to be the elevated self of form. There is a certain point, I think, in this experience where the, the darkness and the fear and the illusion of separation goes bye bye. It has to. It's evolution. I mean, if there's anything I've learned to trust is life. Life is evolutionary. Now, humanity may not be, you know, we may self implode and destroy ourselves and humanity won't be around, but life will continue to evolve with us or without us. Right. So without that judgment um, about that, um, it's like I'm taking great comfort in that, yeah, and that all the stuff that we're dealing with these last two years, oh my God, this is the birth pangs of us moving into who we really are into the light of our own being of love that is going to spit that other force out. And then our own internal sense of separation and fear, which we call the ego that drives all that, without that other force amplifying that message of fear and, sep and illusion of separation, then we have our opportunity to be who we really are and just take the mask off and go, oh, holy Moses, there you are, Peter. You know, I just watched the book the other day. <laughs> Sorry. There you are, Peter. Um, you know, and I remember in here, I got to go back to Rontha and, and 35 years ago. I remember him saying in a, in a session one night, he said, when they turn the machines off that have been pumping this, that's been holding this holographic image of fear that we've uh -huh. been trapped in, he said, when they turn the machines off, you'll know finally who you are. You'll be able to see who you are. Wow. You know, the, the for part of my journey um, with this concept of this evil force, so to speak. Um, yeah, I was raised Christian. I was taught about Satan and, you know, all that. And then I got beyond a lot of the fear. And I think it's, it's very helpful in the sense of not believing in evil to get beyond the fear, right? Because if you think there's only light, then when you play in the light, then you're safe, right? Um, so I've gotten really good at having clear energetic boundaries. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of darkness out there. I mean, I've seen, I've seen things come out of people before, you know, mm -hmm. with eyes that look directly at me, I mean, you know, this, this shadow stuff that comes out. Mm -hmm. And so I know that there are these things that exist. And so, you know, I've got really good boundaries in my home. I've got really good boundaries around myself. And it's something that I've you know, partly it's about working to create those boundaries, but part of it's just like evolving to have enough light that the boundaries are there. And, um, oh gosh, a few months ago, um, all of a sudden there was this being, this, this, oh, let me, let me precede that, that uh, about, I don't know, nine months ago or whatever, um, eight months ago, my guide started presenting me with this huge sword of light, this white light sword. And it like was put in front of me and I intuitively knew that I was supposed to drop it into my body. Mm -hmm. So I'd like see it sort of in my mind's eye and like put it in. And then I found myself spontaneously saying the phrase Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you say that phrase, like for me, it was like it was shifting my energy. I had no idea why. I mean, I know about Christ consciousness, but it's not like you know, I, I haven't been worshiping in that realm, you know, that so to speak. So it's just sort of like the spontaneous thing. So several times a day, I'd have this sort of light that I put into my body and I would just spontaneously occasionally say Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. Well, a few months ago, this really dark entity was coming, not into my space, but coming to fight me. Mm -hmm. And um, I intuitively knew to, to pull the sword in and to whoosh light out. And sometimes I'd say Christ consciousness and it wasn't, and I had to work really hard to not come to this place of fear. And it, it was, you know, it would occasionally have a face that um, <laughs> looked like somebody in the public, public realm that everybody around the world knows. Um, <laughs> but I'm not even gonna get into who that is, but it's, it was like this for two and a half days and nights sort of random times this thing would come in and I'd, I'd go through this process bringing a light sword and whoosh light out mm -hmm. and um and eventually it was just gone mm -hmm. and so it really shifted my perspective about um you know this this concept that evil doesn't exist this concept that you know there's only love and fear because I did a really good job not coming to this place of fear 
which was not always easy because this thing was like vicious. Um, and it still existed. And then it felt like it disappeared. And I don't feel like it just like wandered off, you know, to deal with somebody else. I really feel like it was exiting the planet. Mm -hmm. So it's like this, this, this mind blowing experience that I had no expectations about. Yeah. And um, it felt very much connected to that, that energetic control system. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when I picked up I don't know why I'm pushing Paul Levy's book, but I am. When I picked, mm -hmm. up, when I picked up this book, I, I, and it, this is just a couple of months ago, it was actually over Christmas. And I was like, I consciously went, oh God, because I knew I was opening up a gateway here. Because uh -huh. yeah. when, I, when I first um, opened up, when, when I cracked my Kundalini through excessive unguided meditation way early in my life, um, the, stuff that I experienced oh my god I mean the dark astral realms that's where I spent probably a year battling that uh -huh. and and I remember my my last engagement was I would I would be dragged out of my body at night I could hear gabbling and shrieking in the distance and I could feel hands all over my body and then my oh uh. And then my astral body would be pulled out and I'd be hurled. And the last place I was thrown was this horrible graveyard. And I'm terrified and I'm creeping around. There was this huge slimy crypt. And I'm walking up past this crypt and this enormous red-eyed fangs, dripping claws, you know, big beast comes. And I'm like, just out of my mind with fear. And it gets like right here. And all of a sudden, that sort of light, that something just rose up, love my light mm -hmm. rose up in me and I felt such love and I looked at that beast in the eyes with such love and the eyes just went ah! and it turned and ran oh, interesting. and then I was back in my body and I was never bothered again interesting well and that's not true every once in a while over the course of decades I've had encounters with dark forces uh -huh. absolutely yeah. so I knew that if I was going to open this book, I was going to open myself back up to the, cause I'm contemplating it, you know, da, da, da. And it's yeah. just like, and then why wouldn't I contemplate it and be okay? Because either I know who I am or I don't. Mm. Is there still a whisper of fear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's part of me. Blah, blah. It's the past. It's normal. It's regular. It's whatever right. it is. It's just a habit. It's not who oh, I am. Oh, I like that. It's just a habit. It's a habit. That's, that's, that's profound, Kate. That's profound. Before we go, we go any further, because we're, over there, you know, we're, what's that? Yeah. I said, we go there over and over and over, over the course of our lives. So many billions of times that it becomes a habit. Yeah. But it's not who we are. And at a certain point, we are who we are. We shine that light and we can depend on that. I had a few, I had three disturbed nights reading this book. Not bad. Mm -hmm but I definitely had bad dreams. I don't yeah. get bad dreams, but I knew it, but I was, and I was even aware in the dreams. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I know what this is. Yeah. That and was a level of consciousness. So it was, it was very cool. And, and from, for me, the past couple of years delving into, um, people will call it the truther movement. Um, it's the, the darker aspects of things that are unfolding. Um, you know, I had some disturbed nights too, and it wasn't like bad dreams I was aware of. It was just kind of like, couldn't sleep all the way through the night. You know, I'd wake up, but before we go any further, cause we're running out of time here. I want to make sure people know how they can connect with you, Kate. Ah, um, God, I'm, I'm on Facebook still. Eh, Kate Montana dot Kate. I think, oh, it doesn't matter. I hate Facebook. Kate, Kate <laughs> I, can't Montana, any, I can't say anything real. So yeah, www.katemontana.com. Exactly. That's okay. the best place to reach me. And Kate is spelled with a C, C-A-T-E. Yep. Montana, just like the state in the United States. Um, and before I say my goodbyes, I want you to all go check out Kate's website. Also, if you enjoy these conversations, if you want to share this with others, please go sign up on my YouTube channel, subscribe, like. Um, this particular interview will be up in a couple of days. And uh, so you'll be able to share that with others. Kate, it's <laughs> always expansive to talk to you. Um, thank you for, for, for letting our listeners be the proverbial flies on the wall.
lovely. Thank you so much, Christine. I loved it again, <laughs> always. And I really appreciate those of you who have tuned in and watched. Um, again, katemontana.com. My website's christineupchurch.com. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Christine Upchurch. Thanks, for everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you'd like to empower yourself to step further into your vibration of change, please visit my website at christineupchurch.com, where you can learn more about my insights, upcoming events, and private sessions. Thank you.